Hi everybody, thanks for joining me today. I want to talk to you about a topic that is very close to my heart, only in that it came up last night. And it got me really clear on how, as parents, we can better support our children when they come up and ask us point blank, Mom or Dad, do you think I'm fat? And, you know, every day I deal with families who are looking for ways to better support their children in healthy habits, eating right, exercising. And, of course, I deal with lots of families who have kids who are overweight and some with kids who are very obese. And so part of the coaching that I provide is to handle the stigma and the emotional and psychological issues that come up around being in a world where being fat is seen as bad. And so the reason that this became so clear to me recently is that last night my own son, Max, came up to me and said, Mom, do you think I'm fat? And I mean, it was just like someone had punched me in the stomach because I never imagined I'd be having this conversation with my own son. And so what had happened is that he had, someone on the playground had said to him, you know, Max, you're weird and you're chubby. And so I think for him it was equally shocking because I don't think he's ever been present to his own body in a way that that message would make any sense to him. However, he does know that we've been working with him on his portions for really about the last nine months to a year and getting him to be more acquainted with his hunger and full cues and really following a lot of the lessons that I teach my families every single day. So Max gets this stuff and then being in a position where now he was the child who was getting teased after hearing me really talk about how to how other parents can deal with this. And I think for partly for Max, it took a lot for him to come and say that to me because nutritionist mom talking about healthy eating and exercise and healthy mindset, he hears that, like he picks up on that. That's just the fabric of our lives. And so I think one, he came to me when he told me that this had happened, I think he felt confused and I think he was also embarrassed and felt, wow, I might be letting my mom down here. So it moved us into a conversation that I felt a little ill-prepared for, I must admit. And so I think I, I can coach others and, and come from a place of love and compassion, and I did the same for Max, but I felt like it needed some fine-tuning. And so I am coming to you today with a, having you know, re-explored ways to address this question with your kiddos when they come up and say, do you think I'm fat? You know, I'm getting teased and I want to know what you think. So I've kind of listed the five points of inquiry below and I'm just going to chat about them real briefly here. But rather, you know, the first one is to really, you know, get, first of all, ask questions. And the first point of inquiry is to say, you know what, hon, I'm going to answer that question, but I want to know what do you think? What do you think when people say that? And, you know, some kids might say, well, I don't think I'm fat, or, well, I just think they're stupid, or, well, um, you know, I don't know, or, well, maybe a little bit. You're going to get a whole spectrum of answers, but I think it really gives you a sense of where are they coming from? Like, was this just a total shock to their system and their psyche, or have they kind of been thinking the same thing? So you really get a good sense of where do they stand in this conversation. So then the next question you want to ask is, well, honey, how does this make you feel? And this is a really wonderful place to stay for a while in conversation with your kids because kids aren't really great at identifying a feeling. So they might come up with one right away. Well, it made me feel sad or it made me feel angry or I don't know, I guess I never thought that. You're just going to get a really good sense too of what they think of their own body image and what their kind of, just their being, 
how it's impacted by that kind of statement. Some kids just those types of things just bounce right off them. Other kids, like Max, who's more sensitive, is going to take it in and it's going to affect him a little bit more. So it's just a good area for exploration to really find, you know, how do your kids respond to these kinds of messages? So then you can kind of keep following up with their feelings and, you know, notice that what you have done here is you've just started giving, you know, getting uh, information rather than saying, oh no honey, I don't think you're fat, or you're just so beautiful, or well, you're also really strong, or you're so smart, you know, and giving them uh, reasons to avoid the conversation, we're really engaging them in the conversation with these questions. So the third question then is a really powerful one, and this is, well, what would you like to do about it? So again, kids might not have the answers right away, so you can start kind of probing a little bit. Would you like to learn a little bit more about proper nutrition? Would you like to explore some new ways to exercise? Or maybe you just ask them, would you like to come up with ways to respond to those kids the next time they say that? So you're just giving them you know, ideas for, for solutions and you're moving them further and further away from the kind of confusion of the comment and you're starting to empower them to come up with ways to address it. Then the fourth question is, how can I help you? And so then you're saying, hey listen, here I am for you honey. I'm not going to give you all the answers. I want you to know that I'm here for you, but I want to get a sense of what you're open to. You know, because a lot of times we, we know what we know. And, but we, there's a lot that we don't know in terms of what's really going to help our kids and sometimes we have to let them tell us. So how can I help you is just a wonderful question. Um, and if again, if they're like, I don't know, then you can start offering suggestions for, well, how about we make lunch together and we'll watch our, you know, we'll make sure that the portions match your hands so we're not putting too much in your lunchbox. Or um, let's figure out some ways that you can exercise more. Or, you know, maybe we can read some books on the body and you can understand how the body works a little bit more. It can be whatever, whatever you all come up with. Um, but that's a really good place to start in terms of, you know, how can I help you? And then the fifth point is not so much inquiry, but it's more of an action step. And it's all about commitment. And it's you saying, honey, here's what I will do for you. Here's what I'm committed to. And then state what you're committed to as it relates to the solutions that you came up with when you asked, you know, what would you like to do about this? So all this conversation is moving them in a direction of being empowered, of coming up with solutions, of realizing that there is zero judgment from you, that there's nothing to be embarrassed about, that it's all about changing the mindset and coming and being proactive. And you know, kids are so great because they get it. So pretty soon they're going to be like, okay, mom, okay, dad. And, you know, conversation over and I'm moving on. But then it just needs to be, you know, become more a part of what you do every day so that the action steps that you came up with really do start to address the issue. And, you know, most kids will let those things go go off their back unless it keeps happening time and time again. But if you keep asking and knowing that there's probably things that go on at school that you're not going to hear about, to just continue to be in the inquiry. You know, how are you, how are you feeling about some of the goals that we came up with? Um, that kind of thing, to just really keep them present to, uh, to, the, to what they're doing to, to move away from the stigma of comments that come up at school from their friends. So hopefully some of these points have helped you. As I said, I've listed them below. If you'd like to have more conversation around them or need more details, please email me, juliehammerstein at gmail.com, or feel free to comment below and we can start conversation because I know there's lots of parents that could benefit from this within our community. And again, please feel free to share this information with any families that you think might benefit from the five steps of inquiry. So have a wonderful day. I will see you next week, and thank you so much for joining me.